Hello and welcome to Space Claim. Today we're going to be looking at our sheet metal package and how it can be used on parts and assemblies created from scratch in Space Claim, it can be used on parts that are imported from other designs, and how we can take a plastic part and change it to design that as sheet metal. Let's get started. Before we get into the meat of the demonstration, I just want to show you how our sheet metal package works. So I'll start by sketching a simple rectangle. You see I can pull it one way or the next. Or I can set that to act like sheet metal. Space claim goes through assigns it a thickness, inner radius, and a K factor. And now I can only pull it to the gauge that it's been assigned. And now I can start manipulating the walls, pulling them one at a time, or selecting multiple walls to change at the same time. But maybe we don't want to pull a full wall out. So I only want to make a partial one. So I can change that, pull some walls up from it, and if I don't want a 90 degree bend, I can always re-angle that by moving that one way or the next. Let's put one more wall on the top here, but again, I don't want it to be 90 degrees, so let's set a specific direction for this wall, pulling it out or creating a hem back over it. Now oftentimes we need to break some sharp edges. So I can select on these corners. I can select on the back one by scrolling through the model to get those hidden edges. And if I can, I can have it be a round, or I can toggle that between a round and a chamfer, whichever one our design needs. Now we can go through and see how we can manipulate the rest of the geometry, bending it one way or the next. Or maybe we'll take our group of walls that we've created and move them left or right with one click of a button. Let's check out some of the relief we've created though. Here we can see we initially made a round, but maybe we want that relief to be squared or ripped. We can change it from one to the next, or even change the depth or the width of all the reliefs. Same is true with the junctions. If we want that to be a full overlap half, or maybe we'll put that back to a bend. Perfect. So let's see our unfolded part and see how that looks. So it looks all right, but I think I want to put some holes in it. So we can go to the top and start to sketch anywhere we want in the model. Pulling that through to create our hole. Or maybe we'll go through and copy that to create a pattern of holes and move it to the right. And if we don't want holes, let's actually select on them and pull them to change that into a slot. And notice how all of them updated at the same time. And going to the flat pattern, we can see that that's updated as well. Or if we may need to make a change in our flat pattern, maybe we'll sketch a circle here. Again, we can drag on that, pull it through and make the hole there. And going back to our folded part, we can see that everything's updated there. So now let's actually look at some geometry that's been imported in. Here we can see that I can import in from many of the native file formats. And we're going to open up a server box that comes from the SolidWorks file format. So this comes in as two separate components. We have our top and our bottom pieces. And we can see that we have two walls attached to the top and two to the bottom. And I'm going to move one of the components out of the way so we can see it a little bit better. Now, if I want to, I can identify these parts that came in from SolidWorks as sheet metal. Space claim goes through a quick check, assigns them, again, a thickness, inner radius, and a K factor. And now we can work on it as sheet metal because I don't think I want any walls attached to the top of the model. So I'll actually go through and break those junctures at the top. We can see it on one side. And let's see it one more time. Taking that bend and changing that to a rip. And going to our structure tree, we can see that we have three solids there. One being the top and the other two being the sidewalls. Now I can't just have those sidewalls hanging in space. So I think I'll go to our bottom and change that to a bend, attaching the side walls to our bottom piece. And again, we'll let you see it one more time. So this is great for making drastic changes so we only have a, a flat top on our box and have all the side walls attached to the same piece. So let's hide the top so we can see the insides a little bit better. And we're just in the conceptual stages here, 
So let's bring in some components. And we tried to originally size our box for the components that I'm bringing in now. And we can see that everything fits in pretty nicely. But what we were originally going on the size was the uh, fans in the back. And I actually want the box to be one U tall, and so the original fans are a little bit too big. So we'll bring in some fans that are slightly smaller that will fit in a one U box, and now we'll update the sheet metal accordingly. So if I want to change it, we'll just grab all of the top geometry all the way on the top from one side to the next. And now we can take that and move it to a precise location. Setting this up and dimension it from the very top of the box to the very bottom. And we can see that it's 56 millimeters. So to make it 1U, we'll probably need to change it to 44.45. And now we can watch the geometry snap into place. Now I want to keep experimenting and laying out my box. So I think I'm going to need a sheet metal cover for that board in the back right. So instead of starting from scratch, I'm going to reuse a design I already made. I can go through and break some of these junctures, separating this into different regions like before. And I can actually take part of my design, like this top, and I can copy it and then paste it into a new window, just like you'd copy and paste text in Word. So now that we have our base started off, let's go through and make this sheet metal and start to pull out some walls. Now I want this to be a square, so I'll just pull down all four walls at the same time. And now looking at this board, I can see there's mounting holes in the corner. So I'm going to take those and I want to reuse them on my sheet metal piece. So I can select on one and then use power select to grab the west. Power select goes through and queries through the geometry to find like references. See it's found these three equal radius holes. Now just like the geometry, I can copy them and then paste these back onto my design, giving us holes in all four corners. Now we'll just assemble those into place and we have everything lined up. I think we can move it down a little bit to get it closer to the geometry. Excellent. So now we have our case ready, but I think we need to have uh, some vents in the front. So I might need to drop back down into a sketch, because again, I can sketch wherever I want, whether it's on a part or an assembly. And I think I'll sketch a, a quick rectangle. And I'm going to take that and pattern that out to make my grill or make my vent on the front. I'll pattern that down and pattern that all the way across the model. And we can see it gives me the dimensions and the count. So at any time I can go back, maybe we'll change this to 6, go back, change that to 4. We can see how it looks. And I think I might need a few more. So let's update this and increase the count. Excellent. So now I have my grill in the front, which will allow airflow to go through our box. But speaking of airflow, I don't think this, this component in the back is going to get much air. So I'm going to create a deflector inside of our box. To just show you another way we can start to make these sheet metal solids. I'm going to just sketch a simple line, looking at this top view, how I want to divide up our box. Snap this into place. And now I can go through and start to pull this and change this into a solid. Because pulling on a line stretches that into a surface, I'm just going to snap it up to the bottom of the box. And then pulling a surface stretches that into a solid. You can see we're probably not going to need it to be this big. And we can turn that to sheet metal again, which will only allow us to pull it to the gauge that we've named. So now that we've thickened it, we have these hard corners here, so we'll probably need to go through and add some bends to those. And once those are able to unfold, we'll go through and add some feet to the different sides so that we can eventually bolt that down to our case. So we have the, the three that we'll need, but I just want to make sure everything's aligned properly. So to view everything a little bit better, I think a nice way to visualize an assembly is to drop it down into a cross section. Here we can see I've created a section on our box, and I can move this so I have a dynamic cross section of the entire design. But I really want to check the air deflector and how that's lined up to the bottom of our case. So I'm going to zoom in so I can see that a little bit better. 
And we can see that I made it align pretty nicely here. And can go through and view the rest of it. Still looks pretty good. But I can see on my last little foot there, I created a little bit of an interference. And I actually made this sheet metal wall overlap with the case beneath it. But that's okay because I can actually edit geometry while I'm in this cross section. Grab on the top of it, moving it up or down, and then snapping it into place right on top of our case. So now that our air deflector is ready to go, there's only a few more changes we need to make. And I can see the air vents that I initially had on that box for the board, it's going to be blocked by the deflector. So I'm going to actually go through it again, power select to grab that entire pattern that I created. And I'm just going to take that and I'm going to copy it and I'm going to put it on a new face. So I'll fill it in on the face to the left and I'll actually move it to our front face and it blow it through both sides at the same time. Letting the air flow all the way through and out through the fans in the back. Well now it looks like we have pretty much all we need so far taken care of. But there's one other thing I wanted to do and I wanted to bring in a new component. So I'm going to bring something in from the step file format. And this is going to be a plastic housing that we wanted to incorporate into our design. So we can see it load into our design here. And it looks like I don't have a lot of room for it. So while I'm in the design stage, I want to go through and maybe move some components around, see what will be a better idea. We could probably move this uh, a little bit to the left. And then go through and move our plastic casing in to the area that we've just cleared away. So we can move it over to the left and probably move it down into our uh, server. So actually, what's been told to me from a fellow engineer was that we're going to be producing this in a low volume. So instead of having this be a, a plastic casing, it'd probably be better and more uh, cost efficient if this was made out of sheet metal. So I'm going to move in a forward moving fashion and go through and change this from plastic to sheet metal and just show you how. So here I've power selected and grabbed all the rounds that are on the model like you saw earlier. Now that I have them I can fill them in with the related geometry on the model in a natural way. Once we do that let's build some intelligence into the model. Even though this came from a step file form and I can recognize all the offsets that are there. And once I do that since it's a plastic part, we might not have to remove some of the draft that's there. So we can see there's a five degree draft. So we'll just change that to zero and watch our whole part update at the same time. Looking at the bottom, I can see that there's a few more plastic features in here that we're probably going to need to get rid of. Because we're not going to need all these ribs when we make it out of sheet metal. So just like with the rounds you saw earlier, I'll just grab everything that I don't want on the model and fill it in with the geometry around it. So it looks like we've pretty much got our basic shape that we want for our sheet metal part and now we can toggle that to sheet metal. You see the thickness is three millimeters. That's a little bit too thick for us. So we'll change that. One millimeter looks a little bit better. Now we can go through and put in all of the reliefs that are necessary for a sheet metal part. We can select all these corners and now we can add in these corner reliefs and we can watch the model update as all those little areas are taken care of. And anything that I missed, I can select on here and even select on through the model like you saw earlier. Put in the corner reliefs on our bottom pieces. So now that we've put in corner reliefs, next thing we need to look at are our edges. So just to save time a little bit, I can power select again which would go through and give me all the same length edges, quickly grabbing them all at the same time and adding rips all throughout the model. Now that we've taken care of corners and edges, the last thing I want to do is put in the bends that will be necessary for me to unfold this part. You can grab all those ones on the top and switch them all to bends at the same time. Now we can look at it, view our unfolded part, it looks like we're pretty close to the results I wanted. There's a few things we need to change, and I think I'm going to look at this in a split screen mode. 
just so I can see both of them at the same time as I make my changes. So we can see some of the overlap on the bottom is not allowing our part to unfold. So we need to take care of that and go through after the fact and rip that face. Ripping it straight across by splitting it up or putting a miter corner on the other side. So we can go through an experiment to see which one will be better if we pass this on to our analysis team. Now going through and adding bends, watching them both update at the same time as I do that, there's a few other things I need to take care of. Like this actually can't unfold because of how I constructed it. But I can always go through and change the juncture types later. Changing a, a rip to a bend, we can see how that folds back up. Or going back through and changing a bend to a rip. Allowing our part to be unfolded in a different way which will allow it to be manufactured. So we can do this he test here as a designer before we actually send this out to a manufacturing team. And I can show that to you one more time. And we'll change them on the back to get rid of that red area of interference. So now we can see our new part and our unfolded part. And you can see we're all ready to go. And going back into the overall assembly, we can see that everything's updated here and we have our new sheet metal part. We're almost finished, but there's a few more things I wanted to do. I wanted to make this a removable faceplate so that when we have design changes in the future, we'll be able to adapt quickly. So I've put a plane in and moved it backwards just a little bit because I want to cut our box with the plane I've just put in, splitting this up into different solids that we can see here. Just so we can see it a little bit better, let's hide the back solid. So we've actually cut our faceplate into a few different areas. So we'll need to go through and combine everything back together. You'll see you have a lot of flexibility in space claim to make these changes. Splitting parts up, combining them back together, and working with them however you'd like. So let's look at this in a cross section so we can see the change we made a little bit better. And I'll also bring back the back portion of the server as well. So here we can see the cutter plane that I used. And let's actually take our geometry of the front faceplate and move it out so we can see how I've cut it off a little bit better. So we're going to need to create a quick little overlap on the bottom. And again, we can make these changes in our cross section if we want to. Moving that wall backwards a little bit. Or creating our overlap. But so this will be able to be mounted together. And we can see everything has been changed in 3D as well. So now that we've made this as its own component, let's open this up and look at it on a drawing sheet. Here we can go through, put in dimensions that we want. Maybe we'll dimension the overall length a hole or two. But let's look at the overlap that we've just created on the bottom of this uh, right view. So we can see that we didn't actually make the same length as the one on top. But that's okay, because even on our drawing sheet, we can make changes to the geometry. Selecting on it, pulling it one way or the next, or actually snapping this right into place. So both are 20 millimeters. We'll also need to go through and make our mounting holes on the design as well. So again, in our drawing sheet if we want to, drop into a sketch, create some mount holes, and after we've put one on each side, we can go through and select on these and pull them all the way through. And you can see how we're working in all three views at the same time. And we can do that because in space claim, even when you're in your drawing sheet, you're always working on the 3D geometry in the background. So these changes can be made quickly and easily. So that brings us to the end of today's demonstration. I hope you've seen how Space Claim is a powerful tool that can be used to make changes to the sheet metal like you've never seen before. Thank you very much for watching.